Right, before I forget, we might as well quickly go over the engine swaps in the new 1.4 update. I recorded this the first time around, but as you could probably tell with a couple of my previous videos, my new microphone seems to be clipping quite a lot, and I can't really think of a solution for that besides going through OBS, but my computer doesn't like running OBS anymore because it's old, so... I figured I'd just go back to my headset and sound like I'm calling from a call center. But hey, it's going to be better audio quality anyway. So obviously this first engine swap is for the Atenza Group 3 road car. And you can swap the 787B engine in it for a bargain 1.75 million. Obviously you need to be level collector level 50 in order to unlock these engine swaps. If you're not collector level 50, what are you doing? You better hurry up and get there as quickly as possible. So, like it's it, it does it's it's not difficult. All you need to do is buy the most expensive cards you can, in order to get that level up very quickly. And obviously, with the new update, there's been quite a few people on YouTube who have actually uploaded lots of different money methods. Five million, six million credits per hour now. So better get to that money grinding so same with me i'm only got 1.2 mil but here is the mustang group 3 road car and for 250,000 credits you can swap the windsor 351 maverick engine it's going to give it a lot of horsepower so pretty good what 38 38 kilos and you're getting almost double the horsepower so i'd consider that to be a pretty good trade-off for this particular engine um yeah, it's, it seems like they've kind of made engine swaps less exciting with now that you can like buy them. But I guess that's kind of what they were going for with the roulette tickets, but it was just very unbalanced in terms of what you ended up getting for the roulette tickets. You end up getting like three like 5,000 out of a 3 star and I'm like what's and you're like what's the point in doing that? So here's another Group 3 road car, Corvette. You can swap the LS7 Rampage in there, which is very similar to the LT4, or I think it's LT4, the one in the C7 ZR1. So it's very similar performance to that, I'd assume, because it's got the same power and it's supercharged and stuff like that. Um, I think the next one is a Group B rally car. Uh, there is WRX Group, well, Group B road car, I should say. So instead of the Group C road car, we've got a Group B road car. This one has got an interesting swap, which I think only one other car has. I can't remember what car it was. But it's the CTR38-CTR3 for 550,000 credits. 690 horsepower with, uh, what's that, 50 extra kilos. So... Not not too bad of a trade-off. That can be fun for some snow racing. We will go back to the garage and I'll show you the other engine swap. The next Group B road car. The Evo Final Edition. Arguably the worst looking Evo because, well, Mitsubishi is a bit of a shell of itself now these days, isn't it? making crappy SUVs and vans and stuff. But then again, they're a much bigger company besides cars. They're like an electronics company, industrial chemical company. They're a mixture of everything. So this is probably just a side hustle for the main company. But here is the VR38 DETT GTR Nismo engine, which you can swap into this. So this will be pretty fun to smash about on the snow as well with a thousand horsepower. And now we're getting onto the big, juicy, 8-litre, 16-cylinder engine swaps, which you can put on now. Spoiler alert, if you may have already seen one of one of the engine swaps that's been done already. And um, we'll start off again, funnily enough, with the GTR Nismo. If you haven't noticed, some of the cars that I have here are either maxed out or in a weird state of tune. So... Take with a grain of salt the performance difference between them. So here is the first Chiron swap, 8 litre WR1664 V4T Chiron for 
a bargain 1.6 billion you can have 1479 horsepower in your GTR so that'll be interesting for a top speed run um, there is five vehicles which have this engine swap in particular then there is five other cars obviously which I've seen previously which have the different engine swaps in them but this is the newest one added to the game in terms of a new engine they usually have one new engine and then the rest are just new cars with existing engines in them which I guess is a which I guess works but considering this was a spec 2 update they needed to add quite a bit more content for us to be satisfied with until January so that's the case here this one's pretty heavy thick boy nearly two tons but 1479 horsepower weird choice to put the put the put this engine in this car so I thought that was a bit weird when I first saw it. I'm like RCF what engine swaps that and then it's got the Chiron engine in it and I'm like nice very good so the third one is the Huracan in the STO livery I've got here this one also has the Chiron engine swap so that's this one I think is maxed not on um, ultimate parts so you're seeing a comparison with what the weight would be like if it was uh, maxed out on weight I don't think this has a stage 5 weight from what I remember but yeah that's the lowest if if it doesn't that's the lowest weight it will be if it does have stage 5 obviously you can go lower So we'll go to the next car, which I think is the Viper GTS 13, which has the same engine swap in it as well. I figured I'd show you guys the the or is it there? the actual vehicle in the dealership, not in the dealership, but in GT Auto to see what the performance comparison is like before and afterwards. This one is almost stuck, but not quite. But I do need to upgrade this and like fully to see the comparison. I believe this has close to a thousand horsepower maxed out, but now it has fourteen hundred. Well, it will have eighteen hundred with with a maxed out Chiron engine. And the last one is the C six zero one, which is one that I put in, which I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Is the lightest which is why I built him I know you I know everybody loves the green rims so here, here we go if you see the arrow uh, 8 litre WR16 64v40 Chiron completely maxed out on ultimate parts it's got everything installed nitrous um, not wide body no error on this uh, so actually you've got the weight weight reduction and all that sort of stuff I think you can only put bolt-on parts on this so you can't put any engine modifications in this it's just like turbo and exhaust and air cleaner and stuff but this does have an ultra high turbo on it which gives it that sort of power curve compared to normal so a lot of peak power but this one the stock four turb the stock turbos has a very very flat torque curve so that would be pretty good for performance but this one's very peaky but gives you more peak horsepower, which is what you want. But yeah, I, sh I will have a top speed tune for this, hopefully in the next week, maybe. Depends how busy I am at work. But I believe this is the lightest car, but it also has a problem where the front wheels clip into the arches. But as you go to a higher speed, the car gets pushed down, the wheels stick to the arches, and then it gets locked, so you can't turn around the corner in Route X. So the only way to do to solve that is to have really stiff front suspension or you're gonna have to like raise the ride height which in turn will lose top speed so you'd have to raise it probably like five six millimeters but that's a problem for another time i'm still working on it right now but if you wanted to take the tune down now you can um this is what i've got so far all the gears are adjusted i can't remember if i did a transmission flip on this so take this with a grain of salt as well 
and yeah that's about it so I think the next video will either be a review or a little mini guide on how GT Sophie works so I will catch you then